What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today we are back in the world of Skyrim. This is the second episode of my relaxing Skyrim Let's Play. Um, if you missed the first episode, I would recommend going back and watching uh, a little bit of that. Um, essentially, what we did was we started the game in a different way than you normally do and we made it to Whiterun. So that's where we are now. Um, I just want to apologize for uh, taking so long in between these episodes, but right now it is uh, December. Today, actually, I'm recording this on Christmas Day. Um, today is December 25th, 2019. So it's just the holiday season um, really affecting my schedule, my ability to stream and make videos. Um, I also got sick at a couple, like about uh, about a week ago, actually. And I'm still getting over that, so if I'm clearing my throat and I sound a little bit different, that's why. <clears throat> but as mentioned in the previous one, um, and I'm just saying this for people who maybe skipped the first episode because they figured it was all tutorial, um, we are slowly playing through Skyrim. What the heck was that? <laughs> slowly playing through Skyrim really appreciating the world for its beauty and uh and yeah so make sure you grab a drink um if you you know are going to be watching this whole video um oh hello horse okay just come on through <laughs> make sure you grab a drink i do actually have um last episode i was burning a candle this episode i am burning uh, a little bit of incense right here as you can see so if you see smoke coming from this side of the screen, uh, don't be alarmed. My room is not on fire. <laughs> um, this is actually the last stick of this fragrance that I have. It's called Egyptian Musk. I bought it like a year ago um, when I first started uh, meditating, which I admittedly haven't meditated in too long. But this was my favorite fragrance to meditate to, and this is the last one. But I do have new flavor, new fragrances, sorry, that I want to try, and I figured might as well finish off the old before I start a new pack. But anyway, make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> We're going to be playing some Skyrim today, and I think this is, you know, I think this is the perfect time of year to really explore the land of Skyrim because, like I said, man... The holidays are so stressful for so many people, myself included, and, you know, not just the money, um, but the traveling and, you know, family members, there's all sorts of stuff that, even if it's not bad, it's just so overwhelming, having to go so many places, maybe get gifts for different people, or, you know, for other people, maybe the holidays are... Maybe they're more sad this year than they used to be. Maybe they are mourning the loss of a loved one or whatever the case is. There's a million reasons as to why the holidays are a stressful time or just a chaotic time for, um, <clears throat> for a lot of people. And I think that makes this the perfect time <laughs> to take, you know, a moment of, of relaxation and explore a gorgeous world like Skyrim. So here we are in Dragon's Reach. This is the kind of the, the, the holds, the keep, the castle uh, atop Whiterun. And you can see just how huge this place is. I mean, there's smoke lingering up above us, presumably from all of these fires inside the building. Think about how you would need that day's version of uh, probably the greatest architect in Whiterun, or maybe even the best architect of, uh, of, of Skyrim to come and plan this building and get all this done without any machinery or anything and plan out where these uh, these little fire pits are going to go without risking catching fire to everything really crazy to think about places like this really 
similar to this did exist. It's crazy. Giant fire pit right in the middle. There's actually um, not really a good place for this to ventilate unless that's not really a window over there, which sounds about right. Heard about that, did you? Yes, I was out for a pint or two. What of it? These secret visits to the tavern will make you an easy target for an enemy assassin. You should have told me first. Damn it, woman, I'm the Jarl of Whiterun. I won't apologize for talking to my people. You can't protect me every moment with the <laughs> They're arguing a bit. So. So, the reason that I actually wanted to come here is because I wanted to see if I have anything to disenchant. I don't think I do. I think the first item that you get for disenchanting is from Bleak Falls Barrow, which is actually um, where we're going to be headed. I don't know if I'm going to get there this episode or if we'll just travel to it <coughs> uh, and, and, and go through it later, but... Um, yeah, that's kind of the first mini dungeon. I was hoping, actually, maybe if I talk to either the Jarl or what I forgot her name, Illith or something. You should Irilith. be talking to my steward. Keep your distance. I've got my eyes. I'm the Jarl, not a barkeep. Speak your business. Next time, deal with Avenici. Avenici. Where is Avenici? That's the real question. So, we need to get a prompt for this mission. And... What the heck? Farangar over here. Doing some magic to uh, <coughs> learn a bit more about whatever he's learning about. Probably dragons. So, if you watched the first episode, you would know that we actually started the game a little bit different than you normally would. Um, and by that I mean uh, we didn't we didn't start on the back of the carriage, which means we never were at... we never went to Hel Helgen, um, which means we never went to Riverwood. So, I don't actually know exactly where we should go in order to prompt the game to initiate the proper storyline. So, why don't we head over to Helgen and um, maybe we'll stop by Riverwood on the way. So, let's go ahead and do that. I think that would be a, a, uh, <clears throat> a fun little thing to do. Now, I wonder if... Adrian Avenici's shop is still open. Let's actually run over there and, and see if maybe her little store is still open. Because we do need to get some more arrows. We only have like 15 arrows, which is just not that not that much. So let's head over there. War Maidens is open. Perfect. Just about everybody in here. Give a holler. Welcome to Wolf. Let's see what we can buy. 76 arrows that is more gold than we have so let's buy uh we'll buy 30 because i think that should be enough i mean that that gives us 45 <laughs> and um good doing business with you and we can always get more later now just let's take this in a little bit this is this is a weapons shop this is what it would be like if you look I mean, like someone who knows how to wield a weapon. This is kind well, you've come to the right place. Thanks. <laughs> this is kind of like uh, the modern day gun shop almost, right? <clears throat> like you would come here and they just specialize in weapons. They basically specialize in killing people, weapons. killing animals. That's what they do here at War Maidens. So anyway... Let's um, make sure that we've got everything equipped that we want to equip. We'll uh, equip those arrows. Alright, perfect. So we want to be heading that direction. Oh, hello. Where did you come from? 
just a beautiful landscape out there. Nighttime outside city walls. Trying to be as protected from this outside world as possible. Traveling merchants coming in and out of the city. Passing these stables that we passed before. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, we passed the metery for sure, but I don't know if we passed those stables. <coughs> Just imagine, like, if you lived back in this time, right? Think about all the things that we as modern people spend our day worrying about and thinking about and, you know, just really wasting our energy on. I mean, think about all of the time we spend on our phone, on social media. It's insane. And then you think people who lived back in medieval Europe, they, um, well, they just had to worry about surviving, basically. <clears throat> I mean, we just saw the Jarl's house. Besides, like, the actual king of of the world at this point, um, the Jarl is pretty much as wealthy as you would realistically ever become. And our lives, even as, like, a... How do I say this? Even if you're technically, like poor, or even mid-class or lower mid-class, odds are you still experience luxuries just due to te advancements in technology. That inv ad advancements in technology that people during these days, even the highest, most powerful, most rich, could only ever dream of, right? Got a wolf coming up on us. Let's see if I can kill him close range. I can knock him out. Let's see if I can retrieve. Nope. The wolf. Rest in peace. I remember last uh, episode I, I mentioned that it's rare to see wolves attack in groups of one and then we had a wolf attack in a group of one and I thought for a second that that would be the case again but it looks like there are more wolves over there but I don't think that they're gonna attack us we'll see <coughs> excuse me what was I talking about yeah even the even if you're if you live in a first world country in 2019 or 2020, you still, even if you're very poor, you still probably experience so many more luxuries than even the richest of kings would have experienced back in these days. I mean, think about how easily and cheap you could get good tasting food. I mean, we think of things like McDonald's as disgusting. And in many ways they are, but, or it is, but in terms of flavor, it probably tastes way better than a lot of the meats that they would cook back in the day, especially if they didn't have access to, <clears throat> you know, spices and stuff. Spices were like, I mean, that's what, uh, wars were <laughs> basically over spices and things like that, pirates, whatever. So, this is Riverwood, by the way. A tiny little... Tiny little blip on the map here. Right next to the river. You can see the river flows through. Flows through the little town. Powers this windmill, which is actually... Uh, 
used to cut some logs, which we can demonstrate here. <coughs> oh, I guess I have to actually load a log. That would make sense. So this would be your day-to-day -day life. <coughs> this would be your day-to-day -day life. And to think, we, uh, think of the things that we worry about, we stress about, the things that we spend our time doing these days in 2019, 2020, the modern world. <coughs> Back in the medieval days, this is what you would spend your day doing, loading logs into your wood, wood mill. And like... <coughs> Excuse me. This was the pinnacle of technological advancement, right? Whoever thought of this is an absolute genius. You would probably be pretty rich if you had something like this. I mean, you'd have to be, right? Either that or it was owned and commissioned by the local government or something. So that splits it in two. And then you can, uh, from there, decide what to do with it. People could either buy it by the log, half log. I mean, this would be people's livelihood here. This is what you would do all day. You'd be on this river that runs through the town. That would be your life. No Twitter. <laughs> None of that. No gaming computers to simulate the whole thing on. What a shame. A much simpler time, though. I think that's, uh... <clears throat> one thing that kind of plagues our modern existence. Like... I think everybody feels like with... with social media, I think everyone feels like they need to be something greater, something special or unique, or they have to achieve some level of greatness, or they have to be extraordinary in some way, because everyone they see on social media is. But back in these days, it was considered... Uh, noble of you or honor uh, you could be an honorable member of your community <clears throat> by not achieving something insane by not being the best musician in the land or the most popular which I'm sure those were all things but I feel like these days everybody wants to be famous and rich and everything, and again, I, I'm sure that that was also the case back then, but I don't know, I, it just seems like you could probably get away with none of that. You know, an honest living was really all you needed. You could work as a blacksmith or uh, at a lumber mill or as a chef, maybe, or a... a, a, a at a meadery, brewing a beer, and that was it. You just raised a family in your, you know, on on the edge of the river bank, and that's all you ever know, right? There's no constant comparing yourselves to the Kardashians or the uh, elite few of the world. It's just your little community, and you just have a family and raise your kids and be a member of your society and that's it. I think there'd be way less anxiety than, uh, in those days. <clears throat> it's kind of like ignorance is bliss, right? I mean, if you work as a blacksmith in, in Riverwood, you might not even know what it's like to be a king or a Jarl, and you would never think that you have to achieve that, right? Whereas these days, if you're on Instagram, seems like everybody's an influencer and you're judged by how many followers you have how many likes you get whereas back in these days you 
just wake up. You uh, tend to your farm. Make sure your family relationships are solid. Make sure everyone eats. <laughs> and I'm not saying that there weren't other... I mean, it was probably a thousand times more stressful in other ways. Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Who the fuck is that? Who the hell are you? Better watch it, pal. What's he doing? He's a hunter. With a doggo. Can't hide from me. <clears throat> He doesn't even want to talk. Well, okay, as long as you don't hit me. As long as he doesn't hit me with it. But, <clears throat> yeah, I think life would have been probably a thousand times harder in other ways. Back in these days, obviously, you don't have information, right? You don't know what plants can and can't kill you. You don't even know about bacteria <clears throat> or anything, really. So there we have a giant dragon flying out of Helgen. So this is where the game normally starts. So did that actually um, live in a... Okay, so this is... <coughs> there was no quest marker. But this is where we were supposed to go to initiate the normal sequence of the game. So... Helgen has been reduced to flames ash destroyed completely destroyed and uh, let's go ahead and remove this marker now that we've made it here I'm gonna quickly save as well now of course living back in the medieval days you wouldn't have to worry about dragons <laughs> body turns to ash as you touch it, but somehow a leather journal survived the attack. So let's read the journal. Oops. This must be it. <clears throat> this journal contains several updated entries. First entry. Hard to believe I filled up that whole journal already. I never realized how much of Cyrodiil I hadn't seen yet. So much diversity, yet so much destruction from the Great War. A lot of history has been lost here forever. The expedition is ending soon and everyone will be returning home. I have one last task to perform before I do the same. I'll send the other journal ahead with my supplies and the artifacts we recovered. Second entry. I've received word from my contacts in Skyrim. All seem quiet for now. Probably for the first time since High King Torig was killed. I should be able to make the crossing quietly enough during the night, so long as there are no Imperial patrols to deal with third entry. So much for being discreet, I crossed the border near a small village called Helgen and made my way up to Darkwater Crossing. Unfortunately, I can't get back to my camp now because the area is filled with Imperial patrols. It seems they are searching for someone, someone very important. If I'm not mistaken, someone they intend to ambush here. This could be the very thing I am seeking here in Skyrim, but crossing the border in the dead of night without passing through the checkpoints has turned out to be a very bad plan fourth entry. I woke up early this morning with an imperial sword pressed to my neck. A patrol found me camped under, under a rock outcropping on the edge of the volcanic marshes. I guess I wasn't well hidden as I thought. I have no idea where they're taking us, but I've been stuffed into the back of a rickety old cart being pulled by an even more rickety looking old nag. At least they let me keep my journal for now. Fifth entry. Shore's bones, if only I had known sooner. The ambush, 
the captives in the cart with me. Stormcloak Rebels, led by none other than Ulfric Stormcloak himself. There's no time to explain properly, I scarcely believe in myself. If it hadn't been for the dragon, I'd not even be here to write this down. Yes, a dragon, big, black, as large as the towers of the keep itself. It swooped down in out of nowhere and laid waste to the village and the keep. General Tullius didn't take my head today, or the heads of several Stormcloak rebels, but that doesn't matter now. Hadvar and Raloff set aside their differences to help the survivors. They went into the lower keep hours ago. Something about caves with a back entrance. I don't think they're coming back. I'll have to see if I can get out of the city and down to Riverwood. Someone needs to warn them. This building won't remain standing for much longer. I still can't believe it. A dragon. Straight out of the legends. Nobody back home will ever believe me. So that's... <clears throat> essentially, that is how the game normally starts. Now, you don't typically die <laughs> uh, from the dragon attack like that unfortunate adventurer did. Somehow, his journal survived. So just imagine what this place would be like. You just saw a dragon fly away. Everything's on fire. It smells like smoke. Let's go ahead and enter Helgen Keep. See what we can find in here. So this is a dead gun jar. Don't really need anything from him. This door is open. I just kicked that card. <laughs> Very quiet in here. Obviously, we just saw the dragon fly away, so this is super recent. This all just happened. Oh my god. So, had we been unlucky enough to be standing there, life would be over. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Now, <clears throat> This is so recent that we just witnessed the collapse of part of Helgen uh, Keep. And I mean, this is the biggest, strongest structure in the city. And we just watched it burn and collapse in front of our very eyes. And, you know, like I said before, you have to realize that not only... Not only... Uh, would you normally be living a quiet, simple life back in these times? You know, you'd probably be a farmer or a blacksmith or something, and that would just be your life. So to witness all of this destruction and adventure uh, <clears throat> firsthand, it would be something of, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime adventure for someone like for someone like uh, Omniarch here. Um, so this is the other side of that destruction. Now, being in here, your adrenaline would probably be through the roof. I mean, you're exploring uh, a castle that was just destroyed by a dragon. And up until this point, you probably thought that, uh, or you knew dragons were uh, not real. They were just part of legend, right? So, adrenaline is probably through the roof, <laughs> exploring this place. Let's put on the Imperial Light Armor, because I think it looks a bit better than that fur. And then we have the, the, uh, the Torturer's uh, hood, just because it, it's a little bit stronger than the fur hood we had before. So, I think we're going to unlock these locks, only because um, we need to improve our lock picking ability we are going to be playing as a a thief type of character more of a, an archer but we still should be good at opening locks that would still be useful this mage had some good stuff actually we'll take all that we can take that 
all this little gold potion. Why would they let a mage in a cell with a with a magic potion? Right? You would think like the first thing you would do if you're locking up a mage is make sure that they don't have any way to use magic. So there we go. We rose our lock picking. Let's level up for the first time. Now, when you level up in Skyrim, um, you can pick one major attribute to advance by 10 points. So, if you look on the bottom, I have 100 magic, 100 health, and 100 stamina. Different attributes are more important for different builds or different character types. Obviously, if you power level everything, then all of it's useful. Uh, and it is all re relatively useful, but in varying degrees. For an archer, uh, right now I think health is going to be the first thing that we want to raise. Um, and then as well as that, we get one perk. And you can put that perk into any of these uh, skill trees, basically. And they're kind of organized by um, warrior, mage, and thief. The green ones are typically more um, stealthy or thief-like. The ones near the edges are kind of in between. So red is warrior. Archery is something that, you know, some warriors would use, but also some thieves would use. So it's kind of right in the middle here. So they've organized this really nicely. And uh, if you look in the background, this these are all constellations. So this is like the sky, the Skyrim... Uh, uh, I guess, what is it? Uh, galaxy, should I say. And you can see it kind of looks like a thief back there, right? So this is the face. This is the hood. This is the cape back here. This is their body. This is one arm. This is a leg coming up. This is another leg. This is the other arm. And then this is some sort of dagger here. <coughs> What we're going to do first is uh, probably raise archery, or no, maybe we should raise sneak, because if you are sneaking without being detected, you get a big multiplier. So the less we can be detected, the more often we'll get that multiplier, which will indirectly make us stronger. Now imagine just coming in here, fresh blood on the floor. I mean, this is, it's still shining in the, in the light of the, of the torch, right? Like, this is fresh blood. Don't, don't get mistaken about that. And it's funny, the irony of the Book of the Dragonborn being on the table here. Uh, this is basically the legend of the Dragonborn. And little do they know that it wasn't just a myth. We're soon going to find that out firsthand. So, again, let's see. Is any of this better? No. Um, History of the Empire. We don't need any of this stuff. Um, again, this would be the most fortified building in Helgen, right? Like, this would be... This is where they would keep the most weapons, the most soldiers... I mean, everything would be in here. And this would be, you would consider this probably the safest place to be in the event that something like a dragon attacks, right? And here we are. It's silent. It's empty. There's nothing here. No one left. Everyone's dead. Uh, even, even the, you know, even the weapon racks are barren because all the soldiers came and took them frantically trying to fight off this dragon and pretty much nobody made it out alive. And this just happened. We just witnessed the dragon fly away. So we are like the first people to stumble across this unbelievable event. I mean, I, I can't uh, I can't stress enough how, you know, shocked you would be to come across this scenario. I, I mean, people wouldn't even believe you. They wouldn't believe you that this is real. And, and that's part of, you know, uh, the thing. Somebody obviously, oh, here. He must have gotten tortured and then thrown in this cage hanging from the ceiling. His blood all over the floor here. I mean, this all just happened. So this looks like it was a secret pathway. See, now we're leaving. We're now leaving a well-structured dungeon. 
and entering an actual cave system. So this was obviously supposed to be an emergency escape route for presumably the most uh, uh, important people in Helgen at the time of an emergency. They probably never thought that they would use it for a dragon attack, but, you know, probably more uh, if someone wages war or an oblivion gate is opened or vampires or a giant entering the city. I mean, there's a million things that could kill you in the world of Skyrim. So having a... Uh, a a hidden escape route for your most important members of society would make sense. However, <clears throat> they definitely didn't think they would use it for a dragon. Now, we did get a... Okay, so the Imperial boat was actually better. I thought the long boat was better. And we're... Is that helmet better? No. So we're just looting these bodies. We, uh, we basically just... <clears throat> I mean, look at how beautiful. Imagine, you know, dead bodies and blood aside. <laughs> Tragedy of a dragon appearing aside. Imagine, just imagine what this cave system would, would feel like if you were in here and you're just resting your hands on this wet stone... This, the beautiful sunlight is coming in through this uh, opening in the in the ground, and it's just revealing this wet, natural cave system that's just got this beautiful underground riverway, which uh, is also probably the sewage system for Helgen. But you know, regardless. Um, here we come across where you would normally escape in the uh, story. However, this has already collapsed. So that kind of forces us to leave this cave system. Um, there's nothing really down here. Do we... Yeah. Nothing else down here. I guess I shouldn't really say natural cave system because obviously the walkways aren't natural, but yeah, so that's, that's the story of Helgen, um, out of nowhere, just getting attacked by a dragon that people thought weren't real. And that's the other thing too, like we live in the information age. If you aren't cer cer uh, certain about something, you can pretty much just Google it. And I know that there's tons of misinformation on the internet, right? Obviously, but at least you can sift through it and kind of get a, a gist of what reality actually is like. Um, <laughs> these rabbits, <laughs> these rabbits are so fresh that they haven't even been I just took his leg out. Gross. At least you could sift through the, uh, you know, the online BS and kind of come to a, a real conclusion and understand your reality. But back in these days, that was not possible. You know, anything that you wanted to learn, you would have to learn through going to a library and actually studying it. Um, and you know, uh, that was kind of a luxury for people, I'm sure. But also, if there haven't been dragons in thousands of years, then most people, or anyone alive at that time, would just assume that those are just myths from the past, meant for entertainment. They're fiction rather than an actual fact. And so, your average person would assume that and seeing a real dragon in real life would just absolutely blow everybody's minds and so that's kind of that sets the stage for the game that sets the stage for skyrim why how are there dragons where did they come from why are they here 
Why did they attack Heldren? All sorts of stuff like that. Um, and with that being said, guys, that is going to conclude our second episode. I know we uh, hardly progressed, right? But again, that's you know the part, the point of this Let's Play series is just to take in and enjoy the the ambiance, the gameplay, the sounds, the music. Just listen to that. Um, and, and also enjoy, enjoy the lore a little bit for maybe some people who either don't know the story or maybe haven't really thought too much into it, you know? They really just played Skyrim for the RPG aspect and not didn't really pay attention to the lore. Um, so maybe we can touch on that a bit more throughout this Let's Play. But uh, my incense is almost completely done, and uh, this has been a long episode, so I'm going to call it here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, um, make sure you let me know by dropping a thumbs up on the video. Comment down below telling me uh, what you thought of the episode and if you have any improvements for future episodes. Uh, and also, um, again, if you'd rather this series be on a second channel, let me know as well. Uh, and Maybe I can make that happen if that's what you guys prefer. Um, with that being said, we are exiting the holiday season in 2019, moving into 2020. So... Hopefully, my uh, time frees up a bit more and I can spend more time making videos and uh, streaming. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.